YouTube, we asked you what rifles you wanted us to review under $750. We bought all of them with our own money because nobody can buy a backfire review. We've spent over a hundred man hours testing these guns. In fact, some days we'd come out here to the range. Brad would be dehydrated, eating Vienna sausages. It was sad. We're gonna test them in seven different categories, starting with accuracy. Let's go. Throw me a shell. We've come back into the office um, after doing a massive amount of shooting. We're all <laughs> a little sunburned. Sun, yeah. <laughs> um, and we have all the guns laid out before us. So I know everybody's going to question how we do the accuracy testing because it's not easy to design a fair test for all the guns. Right. I think we have a good justification of each rifle, especially with yep. you guys getting behind them mm -hmm. and also putting a lot of ammo <laughs> so into these shit. guns. I've never shot that much in one <laughs> week. Yeah. Yep. So we put hundreds of rounds through all of them. We used four different loads. Um, each of them, each of us shot each load on each it's gun yeah. um, at a hundred yards, measuring everything with calipers. But it's really hard to say what's the most accurate right. gun. Right. How are you measuring? By best group? by the best of your worst group, by the mean group, the median group, which shooter, which load. Um, and so what we did is we measured it like all of those different ways. And then we averaged all of those measurements out for a composite yep. score. And that's how we had to go was with kind of a score, kind of a grouping. So the way that these tests are gonna work is each test is gonna give a score. And so if the gun just kind of underwhelmed, just didn't do great, it's not gonna get any points for that test. Mm -hmm. If it did, as expected, it's gonna get a point. And if it really like outperformed- Stood out from the crowd. It, it's gonna get a two. And so for the accuracy test, here's what it came down with. Um, four guns are actually gonna get a two. These guns were just awesome. So we got the Bergara B14, right? Yep. We got the Tika T3X um, Superlight. You guys can see all these on the screen, the, the Weatherby Vanguard, and surprisingly, the Ruger American, the least expensive gun on Cheap the table. Gun. Yep. And this thing shoots like lights all out. These awesome. It's amazing. The middle group here, the one that stands out to me is the, the Kimber Hunter. Um, th these two are going to get a one. Um, but that was a one, maddening gun to shoot. It stood out because, again, like if the gun's nice and cool, the conditions are ideal, you can shoot a, a three quarter inch group at 100 yards right. consistently, right? But as soon as you've shot it five, six times, or if it's hot outside, it's sunny, the barrel's heating up, and you can't quite get it to cool all the way down, you can't get five or six. You're talking three shots, yeah. and you're starting to get flyers. The fifth round is like a flyer. For sure. Yeah. And then we saw that on the individual sure. review. We really saw that as yeah, we did the round on the individual the review, it was like usually shot six or seven, but uh -huh. when it was a little warmer outside, if I shot four or five, we're seeing flyers. Yeah, yeah. and so the, the thing is, like, if you're hunting with that gun, fine. You need yeah. one, maybe two shots. But you'll never get a practice session in. Because you shoot a group, you got to give it, like, 25 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. It's, like, it, it's just tough because it has such a thin barrel, but it does shoot well. Yep. Now, um, on the low end, there's going to get zero points here. The, I, one thing I got to point out about this Savage 110 we got, this is the cheapest Savage 110 there is on the market, okay? So a lot of different models. It's, there's, this is one copy of one model of the Savage 110. It's not necessarily indicative of all of the others. Now, I know that's going to be so hard to hear for some yeah. guys yeah. who maybe own a Savage 110 or a Remington 700. 700. Yeah. And if your shoot's great, great. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Exactly. But <laughs> all we can do is review what's before us. Yep. And we shot so many hundreds of rounds that I feel like we're giving the, every gun a fair shake. Yep. The Remington, you know, back in the day, this is not the same Remington that it's my not. dad ha handed down to me, no. my grandpa. This is not the same build quality. Not this is the 2020 accuracy. Remington. This is the 2020 Remington. Yeah. So we've moved on from accuracy to build quality. Yeah. Let's hear it. So a few, well, let's talk about the high end first. We put the Weatherby and the Bergara in this um, because they had to stand out in some way. Mm -hmm. Ignore the hideous Badlands camo. <laughs> agreed, <laughs> very yes. much so agreed. Woof, and we say ignore because you can buy it in other finishes. Yes. But it's a really well-constructed stock. It is stiff. Um, it just feels solid in the hand. It's got the Monte Carlo shape to it. 
Cerakoting on this. I'm a Cerakote guy. I don't like babying blued stuff. I right. want it to be tough. And so I love that. Same as the Bagara. Um, it is blued, but that stock, oh, it's nice. It's, it's got solid. the soft touch. It looks good. Stiff. A metal trigger guard. It's it's well constructed. I'm, I'm coming around to the garage floor <laughs> style look. Overall, okay though, these one. two do set themselves apart. They do, absolutely. From any of the others. The, the Tika and the Kimber are both solid builds. I mean, this it's there's no texture to it at all on the Tika, but it's a very stiff um, stock. I like the fluting on the barrel. I like yep. the stainless barrel. It's solid. Now the Kimber almost, I argued with these guys about taking yeah. it down to zero. Here's why. One, it looks plain, which whatever, aesthetics, right? But the magazine slaps in really easy. It's very, very, very nice. Good, yeah. um, and it is a nice stock. It's very stiff up even on the fore end. The issue that I have um, is when I rotate this down to where I would just comfortably hold on the gun, that trigger is a reach. It um, is. And it's not an issue on any of the other guns. No. Is this gun being such a light gun? Now, all of these ones are just, they're on the lower end. The Ruger American's no surprise. It's a very inexpensive gun compared to the others. The Howe is reasonably inexpensive too. This is a cheap, cheap stock. That polymer I mean, stock it's, is. It's, it's like it's just <laughs> super flexible. It's like chunk of rubber. rubber. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. how it feels and how it looks. I mean, oh it's my It's a giant high bouncy ball. I can't knock on it too much. It's, it's inexpensive compared to some of these other it guns is, here on so. the table, um, but it shows. Yes, so. it does. Yeah. So we'll talk about price in yeah. a different category, but just comparing it in the under $750 price range, I think you'd have to agree that those three belong a little bit lower. Absolutely. Yeah. Ding, ding. Round three. <laughs> uh, we're talking triggers this time. Now, we'll, we'll mention one thing. We measured trigger pull weight we did. on mm -hmm. all of them, but these are all have adjustable triggers. Yeah. But I've got to think 80% of triggers people buy and <laughs> never adjust. And so we did take it into account somewhat the out-of-box bo yeah. weight. Right. Yep. But mostly we're talking quality. And so, okay, quality-wise, the ones on the low end, as far as I'm concerned, weight wasn't even the factor. Right. Um, I will say all three of these triggers, um, they're, they're fine. They, they're definitely as good as or better than the low-end rifles. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly, they're, they're fine. They're good triggers. But every single one of these had perceptible, noticeable take-up. So, you know, whether it's a single stage or a two stage trigger, there was, you get to that tri that stage where it should just break cleanly and then there's a little bit of creep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, for high accuracy type shooting, that's gonna be a factor. Two things I would note in the lower category are, one, the Ruger American. In our review of under $350, we said it had a good trigger. Yeah. And for that category, it does. It does, absolutely. But unfairly, we're putting it up in the, in the higher category just because it won the lower category. You asked for this, so. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and so here, it doesn't quite stack up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is the Kimber. Um, it, has, uh, it has just a little bit of er creep if you're like, really splitting hairs and really trying to look for <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. But the other reason that I put it down uh, is the blade, the actual blade Very of the trigger curved. is really curved. Um, so much so that it kind of puts you at an angle on the trigger. And again, mm -hmm. I just, I want to be able to pull that thing straight back and I don't feel like I quite can. Yeah, yep. right. And especially if somebody, we're going the opposite direction here, but somebody with a really big finger, that tight, curve on that blade it's might be, yeah. be an issue. Now these ones on the high end, the Bergara and the Weatherby um, and the Tika, frankly, all three of those amazing triggers. They're very light right out of the box, um, you know, around two, two and a half pound triggers. Um, and they all just have such a clean break, yes. like no perceptible creep. It's just smooth. And that does play into, um, into your accuracy. Yeah. And in the middle tier, these triggers are great. Yes. I, I can't Fantastic. complain about them. Just the out of the box weight, weight was a little bit higher. Again, if you're going to adjust it down, just don't even factor that in for you yeah, personally. Because exactly. these if you are the same as down, those. Yeah. If, if you adjust adjusted. it down, I would move the Savage trigger higher. Yeah. Yes, the Savage Accu trigger, that's a heck of a trigger. Yeah. It really is. So you can decide how much weight and you're going to give it for yourself. All right, on to round four. We're going to talk about the action, the actual bolt, the movement, the slide, and all that stuff. Magazine. We gotta put the Savage at the bottom uh, on the individual review. We For ran sure. into major issues. Um, wouldn't eject sometimes, wouldn't load in sometimes. 
after a good cleaning, yeah. we ran it yeah. today and we didn't run into much right. of an issue. Sometimes you'd get a I little did, catch. Exactly. So I loaded the whole mag and I had a catch. A um, I had one of them catch going in. I had another one that on the throw yeah. actually loading it in. So after a cleaning, it did improve and breaking in. I mean, we yeah, put hundreds absolutely. of rounds through these. The Ruger, we had a, a few. The Ruger, yes. yeah, this is another one where if, if your bullet is not right in, mm -hmm. um, it's and if you get any weight at the bottom of the mag yes. pushing up or anything, yeah. there were, there's a white tail in Texas that would be dead right now <laughs> if that thing had cycled cleanly. Yeah. Now, the Howa is fine. The bolt, you know, isn't quite as smooth, whatever, it's fine. The Remington, same thing. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, it just doesn't stand out as like a really right. smooth action. Yep. With the Kimber that kind of bumps it up above all these, is this this it's magazine? Just, it's this really magazine. Nice. It loads really easy, really well. Um, it just it's all. all right. So round five, usability. Hard Ooh. to define this category. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're taking into account how nice it is to shoot, but also how nice it is to carry. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really we gave everything either a one or a zero on this because nothing like especially stood out as mastering lightweight and super easy right. to shoot. So lightweight category, you got to give to the Kimber. If I'm hiking 20 miles, <laughs> that thing thank is you. under six pounds. <laughs> it's a couple inches shorter than any of the others. Right. Strap that thing on a pack, you're good. Yeah, to this go. stuff isn't catching branches yep. and stuff as yep. you go. Great, great thing. But in terms of shootability, these are all reviewed in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, but you can buy these in multiple calibers, right. and so. Don't buy this in a real heavy beat you up caliber uh, because it's super lightweight and it will beat the crap out of you. Yeah. It just depends on your use case for all of these. Absolutely. Same with the Tika. Yep. So this is the T3X Super Light. Super Light. And it is super light. Just over it six is, pounds. Right. And even in a 6.5, like it doesn't create a wallop, but it kicks substantially more than any of these other guns. I know people are gonna <laughs> hear this and be like, baby. And it's like, no one was hurt, no, right? right? But we it shot was these things weird. hundreds of times. We'd be sitting prone and we'd just pass rifles to each other, shoot a group out of this one, let it cool down, next gun. And like every time somebody would shoot, the, it would go to the Tika, they'd be like, after the shot, just yeah, like, like it had more recoil. Yeah. So we said, why? Because it's, we had, we scoped the Kimber and the Tika with different scopes to make them weigh like almost the exact same thing and then shot it. And we're like, okay, that it's just the weight, right? No, nope. the Tika still kicks one. We're like, what is happening? Well, it has a longer barrel right. and you're getting about a hundred feet per second extra. And so it just gives you that little extra recoil. Now the Weatherby and the Bagara are heavier rifles, more in that 7.5 pound range. Right. Um, they would handle a heavier caliber much, much better. It's still fairly lightweight, uh, fun to shoot on a Saturday. It's not gonna kill you carrying around the mountains. It's just not as exciting as carrying a Tika or a Kimber in the mountains. Yep. <laughs> price, I started before Ricky sat down. Ah, dang it. <laughs> so you'll see the prices on, on the screen here. Um, I mean, it is what it is, just a couple notes. Why did we include some of these much lower end guns against the others? We're not trying to have a perfect apples to apples comparison. It's just that if you're looking in this bracket of prices for yeah. a rifle, these are some you're gonna commonly see at the store. And it's what you guys asked for when we uh, had here. And so price should definitely be taken into a comparison. For example, the Ruger American, if you overlook some things on uh, build quality and cycling, then maybe you say it shoots incredible at that price. Yeah. Buy I'd say the heck 300 out of it. bucks compared to some of those at the top end. If I were buying my kid a hunting rifle right now, mm -hmm. I'm probably going this direction. I actually did. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done six rounds. We said there'd be seven. There is a seventh round, but it comes after this course. So on paper, we see what's best, but sometimes by chopping it up in categories, you don't have an accurate picture of just which one would we take after spending so much time with these guns? So the way we're gonna do it is, each of us can vote out someone off the island. Yep. And then with what's left, we can each pick our favorite. And we have, like this is real, we haven't talked about <laughs> no. what we like because right. we don't want groupthink happening. If I'm gonna kill one, it's gonna be the Savage. Um, for lots of different reasons. Um, stock isn't that great. Um, cycling issues, accuracy wasn't that good. I, I just wouldn't 
purchase that. Again, compared to the other ones, Do you right? mind if I go second, Ricky? Go ahead. I'm killing the Howla. Okay. Reason being is it's, it's heavy and it doesn't shoot that well. I'm a backcountry guy. I want lighter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I am actually going to go ahead and I'm going to kill the Remington. Yeah. Um, I agree with you guys entirely on the, the other ones as well. But um, for me, the Remington just isn't what it should be yeah. for the price, especially Agreed. when we have these other options in a similar price point. Agreed. So of what's left, what would everybody pick? Do we just say one, two, three, and everybody put their hand on one? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Hey, oh, welcome to we all have rifle. Our guns. <laughs> Woo. Okay, well, now we got to see what. Uh, you get your 30 second this sales is pitch. Look staged, but that is totally legit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh boy. I See, I would be happy with any of any these. Any of these guns. three. No seriously. So, I'm going to throw this out there. I really, really love the Weatherby. I love the trigger. But then what set it apart between these three was the action. These two have a much. Not much, but a smoother action. They're extremely smooth. They're smooth. Um, this one feels a little gummy, I guess, to it. What I love is the Cerakote, and this stock is stiff as hell. I know. And this stock, it feels like concrete. Up until the last, I would say, yeah. five seconds, I changed from that to this. Also, smallest group we shot ever of yeah. all the testing from here. Second smallest group we shot from here. Also from here. What? I like that. I'm pretty sure this was the second. Nope. I don't remember. <laughs> We've gone through a lot of data, guys. We've gone through so much. Either way, both of these shot, um, the best group was under a 0.8. They were both in the 0.7s. Yeah. Um, the best group on this one and the best group on that one. And the Bergar was right there with them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. all of them. Also, I'd feel really comfortable shooting this in heavier calibers because of how good that stock is. Yep. I really like the Monte Carlo design uh, on there. Um, but again, Cerakoting, I love it. I love that I don't have to think about a blued barrel. Where I went with the Bergara was weight. It's a little lighter than the Weatherby. But then just the action is just... Man, it is that much more smooth mm -hmm. than the Weatherby. For me on the Tika, it's substantially lighter than the others. And yeah. so mm -hmm. if I'm buying a hunting rifle, and again, I'm thinking a lot in this particular cartridge, the 6.5 Creedmoor. And so if I were buying a 7mm Reg Mag or something like that, I would want to go with something. This one definitely had the strongest right. kick. But for me, that doesn't bother me. Just overall shooting all of these guns as much as we did, this is the one that I felt most comfortable with. I like the stainless steel barrel. I like the fluting on the barrel as well, but I just, it also came down to the You guys, I hate ties. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. Um, just, you gotta, I hate it when you watch this video, you wanna know what the winner is, and then it ends like, well, they're all good. We gotta find a way to, to we okay. gotta come together, people. Here we go. Okay, this one costs more than those two, and those two scored slightly Here's higher. where it goes for me next. I would pick the Weatherby because of the trigger. That is okay. a crazy smooth yep. trigger. Yeah. I think when you look at our composite, composite score, mm -hmm. and when you take into account that this is a little mm -hmm. bit more expensive, this one drops out. Very, but very also similar. the weight. Like, seriously, if we're going deer hunting, I probably would go there. Yep. But, I, ah, gosh, I hate this. <laughs> and and I, I'm with you, Jim, because I feel the same way about the Weatherby. I... Especially putting so much ammo through all of these. I really like the Weatherby. Yeah. But just overall, like, the action did it for me mm -hmm. on the Bergara over the Weatherby. You might break a big yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Here's what it comes down to, though. You guys saw there are so many factors that we took into account here. And depending on which factors are most important to you, you have hopefully identified a clear winner for yourself and your specific use. We if failed them. We couldn't come up with a winner. <laughs> if you're shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor or smaller, I love the Tika. If you're shooting something heavier, man, yeah, the Bergara, the Weatherby, it's yep. kind of up to you.